and we're back with a great idea for making some beautiful necklaces. And I love the way that you used a monochromatic color palette with these. Let's take a look. Yeah, it was really fun to keep it simple with, with using just, you know, rounds and one color for each, each necklace. And then it's nice to like play off of that and just try to make as many necklaces as you can with rounds because you know you can find those everywhere. Yes, and then you have one for every outfit. Exactly, right? or All you right. could layer them. They look really cute layered Oh yeah, together. definitely. Um, so basically what we do is we start with these gears that you can find in lots of different shapes and sizes and different metals. So that forms the base for each flower, right? Each flower um, lays on one of these gears. What I did was I started by just passing a flexible beading wire right through the, through a crimp tube and then through one of the spokes of the gear and back through the crimp tube. Okay. So what I do, it's, it's really pretty simple. You just have to take your time. Actually, I'm going to have to take these off of here. I'm going to pass through there. And, um, and you're just going to wrap, putting your, hooking your wire into one of the notches and bringing your wire up through this. So that's, that's one. Then you're going to string another bead, finding the hole. And it's in interesting process. that you used the beading wire instead of shaping wire. I would have thought that you were working with shaping wire for this. You That's know, neat to see I, a different use. I originally did, and it didn't work nearly as well as this, because you know how when you're using wire, every time that you bend it or shape it, it gets tougher? Right. With all these wraps and turns throughout here, it got tougher and tougher and tougher. And so eventually I thought, you know, I really need to change this idea. And um, It's a little more thread-like, so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes it actually pretty simple. So you go ahead and you go all the way around until you have a flower that looks like this one. So you're creating that base layer of the larger beads. Mm -hmm. So you do have to maintain a certain amount of tension or else they'll kind of slide around on you. And they do slide around a little bit, but that's actually kind of nice. It's a little bit forgiving because then you can adjust it. I tried it with different numbers of petals and five was definitely the best number. They stayed pretty solid. Um, but then you make these kind of, you're gonna embellish the petals with these smaller beads. Okay, and depending on the size of the gear that you have or the mm -hmm. type of gear, you know, of course you could accommodate a different number of beads, but mm -hmm. it's important, it seems, to work with an odd number for the larger beads, right? Yeah, I think that that's, that's the part of the key is that they just want to set pocketed together that way. And when I'm doing these, um, the little kind of embellishments on the outsides, I'm just taking the wire in between yeah, the larger beads like that. You can hear them click. And I just go all the way around with every single one. Um, and you just kind of sit them in those notches. The wire goes into the notch and the beads go into the little notches between the larger beads. Yeah. And you just keep going round and around until you come to the end of your circle of beads. Okay. And, um, and you'll finish it up. They do sometimes want to whip around on you. But you just pull them tight and they'll, they'll sit together. And when you're done, I'll go ahead and See if I should finish finish this up here. Okay. Um, you're going to finish it the same way that you started it by um, just passing a crimp tube onto your wire, and um, then just going back through the crimp tube with your wire after passing it under a couple of the wires on the back side so of your gear. So you just want to weave it kind of to make sure that it's secure. Yes. So you're going to kind of like I, what I would do is to even though I'm missing one of those. Put your wire on here. Pull your wire really tight, as tightly as you can. Go under, under a couple of these wires. Oh yeah, I see. And then go, and I like to go back through like I would if I were crimping. Yeah, so you just want to make sure also that it's hidden. Yeah, and it, you want it to slide up toward the back. And then I've been, I've flattened on mine because it's so much easier to flatten them and have it lay flat against your skin because this part will lay against your skin. Let's take a look at the back of that one so that we can see. Yeah. So this is this one's all finished and you know this it just kind of it sits right in there and so all of these are done. And what you do um, in order to get these onto this strand is I went ahead and I threaded a bunch of beads onto this one. You're just gonna put some smaller beads to kind of hold these spaced out. Um, oh yeah I see. So you put some smaller beads in there to kind of make up that space. Right. Otherwise, they don't like to hang together very well. And you're going to pass your wire under one of these spokes that you were just working on. It's a little finicky, but you'll get it. And then you string a couple more of these tiny beads that are as space holders to just keep everything together. It's kind of like, it's nice to be able to pull them off the strand like that all sure. at once because yeah. they're so tiny. And you just push the th thread through. Whoop. 
Yeah, that's and a good tip. You can also lay them down on your bead mat and then the holes face up and you can go along picking yeah, them up. pick them up that now, way. Now, um, when you're ready to finish the strand. Basically, what I'm gonna do is gonna continue to put these silver spacer beads on here. And once I have enough to kind of fill up the space between these two, kind of the outer embellishment beads, I'm gonna go underneath another wire, pull it through like that, put a couple more of the silver beads on to hold those in place. So you kind of measure it by the, the distance between, or the, across the back of the yeah, embellishment. Yeah, the little, between these little petal, like the outer petals. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I've done it like that. And then I use this lighter kind of lavender color um, for more spaces in between each blossom. Yeah, well the drape is so perfect on this. So that really, I can tell that really helps. Yeah, it's one of those things where when you're working with larger components like these, you really do have to think about spacing and you have to think about how it's gonna hang. And then you're just gonna continue on um, with these spacer beads, adding to a couple kind of behind there. And you want the spacer beads to be nice and small because you don't want the, um, the larger components, these blossoms, to be bumped up away from your neck. Right. If you used too large of a bead there, it would um, press the bead away from your skin and it wouldn't look very natural. Well, let's take a look at the back of the finished necklace there and we can okay. see the way that the spacing helps it drape. And it does look so nice and finished even on the back. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, it's nice when it works out that way because um, basically you just want it to be comfortable, you want it to be flat, and you just have to kind of find the different, the right sizes of rounds. Like I said, it's only, it's just round beads in different sizes and shapes, and um, or not shapes, but different sizes um, that make up all of this necklace except for the gears. Yeah, it's so pretty and a great, what a great way to bring them together in the colors too. And now for finishing the ends of the piece, it looks like you crimped to attach your clasp. That's all I did was I just crimped, you know, you, you're going to go ahead and finish with these light lavender beads. You're going to continue the stringing process with the, the spacers until you have all five of your blossoms set on there. Make an even number of beads on this side you know, to pick up your crimp, pick up your jump ring. Make sure that the ends do connect and are definitely touching each other. You could also use a spring ring here, or split ring here, excuse me, and that also works well to make a secure connection, but you'll just pass through your jump, or jump ring or spring ring, split ring, and follow back with your crimp tube. Yeah, and I know you're not really finished, but it's always yeah. good to see you use the crimper. It always is nice to do that. Actually, on this one, let's see, here it is. Um, just snug it up there crimp, use the inner jaws, and fold it. Perfect. So, and that'll give you a nice secure fit. I always pull, make yeah, sure. Make sure that it's solid. That it's solid. So in addition to this jewelry piece, we also have asked all of our guests to bring some tips this season. And Molly, you have some great tips for storing these kinds of strands, because I'm sure you have a lot of bead strands at home. Yes, it's easy to, um, it's nice to keep them on the strands because like I showed you before, it's nice to be able to pull, especially if the small ones, a few off at a time and slip the wire through so you don't have to pick each one up individually. So here are some ideas that I've had for um, stringing. Sometimes when I'm experimenting with a design, I just string it straight off the spool to see, so then I don't have to waste any of oh, my- Idea. any of my um, wire. See how it looks. So I see how it looks. And then um, also another thing that has been fun to use, if you need an ending that you can take off and on, you can use what's called a scrimp. And these are they little... They have a tiny little set screw they in there. They have a tiny little screw see, yeah. and this tiny little screwdriver, but it, you can screw it on to hold the beads on the strand and unscrew it to take that off. So it's, you know, you can change things around if you change your mind about your design later. Smart. And then if you have, if you want to just keep some beads and you're using beading wire, you can just put a tiny little number one crimp tube on the end. If you've got a, um, like these are on plastic strands, um, you can use one of these alligator clips. It's larger, it's easier to manipulate with your hands. Yeah. And um, you don't have to worry about it marring the wire. You wouldn't want to use an alligator clip on your beading wire because- That's a, I'm so glad you said that. I was getting worried. It yeah, would but get kinked those up. are perfect for the office. <laughs> you know, also binder clips. Yes. Paper clips, any type of clip when you mm -hmm. have that sort of nylon string that the beads come on, you can yep. do that without damaging it. Yeah, that's it's they're they're really easy to use. Another option that is you can just pass the bead, you can make a loop with the strand, pass it through that bottom bead, and that'll keep the others on the strand as well. 
One of my favorites it is the um, like a bead stopper. It's like a tiny spring, super simple. You pinch Just it to open your hands it up. together like that. Pop the end in there, and it holds it. And um, it really you can use that on your beading wire. I use it to hold in progress projects a lot. I use those on thread too. So oh, that's a any, good idea. Any yeah. type of stringy material is fine for those. And then if you don't care about your, if, if, if again is that like kind of nylon plastic stuff, you can use just a folded over piece of tape, which works great. But you wouldn't want to use it on anything else because it's sticky. These are great tips. Thank you so much, You're Molly. Welcome.